Hello all! Today we're going to test the Fraba Serial Absolute Encoder. I made a test jig to help me do this. Uh, there's a couple of things I need to talk about on my jig here. Uh, so we're going to get uh, into a little bit of theory here. The Serial Absolute Encoder that we're going to be testing today requires a transmit acknowledge signal that's your TAKT plus TAKT minus those are differential inputs into the serial absolute encoder now to recover the data the position data from the encoder we need to send a 1 megahertz signal into the encoder. So I have a function generator here. It's set to 1 megahertz plus 5 volts peak. The square wave will be from 0 to 5 volts. That's fed into one input of this NAND gate, 74HC00. I have a 555 timer circuit right here set in a stable mode of operation. It's continuously putting out a square wave from 0 to 5 volts. That's being fed into the other input of this NAND gate. Now the reason we need this down here, this square wave down here, is because we need to turn this 1 megahertz off and on and off and on and off and on. If you don't turn it off, you will not receive continuous data from the serial absolute encoder. So we have the two square waves here, the one megahertz plus five volt peak square wave here, and we have this square wave here, which puts the 1 megahertz out here and then turns it off and then turns it on and then turns it off. So this frequency down here is much, much less than that frequency there. I have 10 kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohm, and 1 microfarad. So that, that frequency is not very fast down here on this NE555 timer. So the 1 megahertz is fed into this inverter and all this inverter is doing here, this 74HC00 configured as an inverter, is it's making that square wave uh, high when both these inputs are high. That's being fed into an AM26 LS31. This is a differential line driver. So we have that differential line driver driving into the absolute encoder TAKT plus and TAKT minus. Now down here there's two enables on that 26 LS31 pin 4G and pin 12G bar so make sure when you set up this IC that you don't forget about pin 4 and pin 12 enables let's go look at this next circuit here this is the receive when we transmit that request into the serial absolute encoder data will be received from that encoder on data plus and data minus that comes into a 26LS32 and that's where we look at it with the scope. 
this is our oscilloscope right here tied to the output sorry about that had some folks knocking on the door so when we request data from the serial absolute encoder with that last circuit we had up the data comes in here through the differential line receiver the 26 LS 32 and here we're looking at that output of the differential line receiver with an oscilloscope right here there's channel 1 probe and, and uh, channel 1 probes ground right there the 26 LS 32 also has enables on pin 4 and 12 G and G bar All right. Now, the test circuit and the encoder need to be powered up. And we do this with external power supplies on this connector right here. The serial absolute encoder that we're working with requires 15 volts VDC. 15 volts DC. That comes in on this green connector right here, pin 1. The integrated circuits on the tester circuit require 5 volts. So I run 8 volts DC into this pin right here. This MC7805 takes the 8 volts and regulates it down to 5 volts DC right here. Both your external power supplies, the plus 15 volt and the 8 volt require a ground and I share the grounds between the two power supplies here on pin 2. Now here is the wiring harness to connect the absolute encoder, the serial absolute encoder to the tester circuit. I've got a gray uh, colored terminal board. I label it TB1. And on these pins right here, we tie the tester circuit to the serial absolute encoder. On TB1 pin 9 and 10, that goes to the DB15 connector on the serial absolute encoder. And pin 1 and 2 on the serial absolute encoder is TAKT plus and TAKT minus. That's your transmit request of 1 megahertz on and off. The data from the serial absolute encoder, data plus and data minus, come from pin 3 and 4 back into the tester circuit on TB1 pins 11 and 12. To power up the encoder, I put 15 volts on pin 7 and it's ground on 8 and that gets routed out to the serial absolute encoder on pin 6 UB and 7 ground. That's the tester. Let's go do the test. Here's the changing data in relation to the clock as I rotate 
the serial absolute encoder. The data is on top and the clock is on the bottom. <laughs>